Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to the romantic Bentas neighborhood here in Madrid. As you can see, I have my lovely friend. Hello, I'm Jane. And you are from? England, the north of England. Jane from the north of England. And in this video, we will be talking about differences in vocabulary from British and American English. So I will be representing, once again, American English. And I'll be re representing British English. Sounds good. So all I have here is a list of 15 words that are the way I say them in American English, but Jane has different ways of saying them, and we're going to go through, we're going to talk about the different ways of saying these things. These are all very normal things to talk about. They're general concepts, things you could find in your day-to-day -day life. Are you ready, Jane? Ready. Great. So the first thing we have today is an ATM. We say cash point. Great. So an ATM is a little machine outside of a bank where you get money. You put in your credit card or your debit card and the machine gives you money. We call it ATM, which is short for automatic teller machine. And cash point is fairly clear. Cash is money. That is money, not credit or debit cards basically. So, once again, ATM and cash point. Great. Our next example is a trash can or garbage can, which are two things we say in American English. In British English, what do you say? We say bin or rubbish bin. Yes, and could you describe a what exactly we're talking about here? A, a bin is what you put your rubbish in. I assume it is. It's a bin that you put your rubbish your in. Your rubbish, or as the Americans say, trash. Yeah, uh, things that you have in the house that you do not want. For example, you know, food from three days ago. You would throw it in the trash can or the garbage can, or in British English, you would throw it in the... Bin. The bin, the rubbish bin, for example. Um, also, just the fact that we say trash or garbage, they say rubbish is another story, which is interesting to know. The next example we have is sidewalk. Pavement. Yeah, the sidewalk is the place where you walk. You're not in the street with the cars, you are on the sidewalk next to the buildings. And in British English they say? Pavement. You may have heard the Adele song, Chasing Pavements. That's about pavements. I assume that nearly everyone in the world except me has heard the Adele song. Chasing pavement, um, <laughs> because I'm not that interested in pop culture a lot of the time. In American English, we actually use the word pavement to talk about the material, like the black sort of material that you use to make the streets. Is that also pavement? No, I guess you would say tarmac. Oh, wow. Tar the, on the roads. Tarmac. Yeah, okay. So I think yeah, tarmac, tarmac is something completely different in American English, but yeah. that would be getting into a very long story about materials that are not interesting to anybody. So yeah, sidewalk and pavement. Great. We have a few foods here. In American English, well, we have this sort of large purple vegetable or whatever um, that yeah, you can eat in various ways. I don't have any idea. Um, we call it an eggplant. And in British English? It's an aubergine. Aubergine. Which is the French word, I believe. Yeah, it probably is. Um, eggplant is, you know, egg and plant together, it's eggplant. Very basic. Um, do you think you use more French words in British English than we do in American English? I think we probably do because I think the next one could be French. Also. The next one definitely French. sounds French. I don't know, uh, but it definitely sounds French. In any case, in English we do use a lot of words that come directly from French. In American English we use some, baguette and things like this. Um, in British English, maybe more, because they are very close to France, always. Our next one, okay, in American English, we use the Italian word. It is zucchini. And we use what I think is probably the French word as well, courgette. Courgette, yeah. So zucchini is another vegetable. It's long, it's green. I don't like it very much, but, you know, other people do. It's a zucchini, and that is the Italian word. Um, in, yeah, in Spanish, you call it something completely different, but yeah, in... British English, it is courgette. Courgette. Great. Now we have the typical talk about 
chips in American English chips are something you buy in a supermarket in a bag they are fried potatoes but they're very thin and you you know eat them and they're crispy or crunchy we call them chips you call them well as you just said they're crispy so we call them crisps yes crisp is an adjective in American English that we use to describe things that snap easily when you put them in your mouth, I suppose. Um, and then we have the other kind of fried potatoes, the bigger fried potatoes, like you would get at McDonald's, for example, if you go to places like that. We call them French fries. We call them chips. So would you have fish and French fries instead of fish and chips? <laughs> I mean, if it's specifically fish and chips, we would probably call it fish and chips. Yeah. yeah, but just because it's a specific, you know, phrase, fish and chips, but uh, burger and fries. Okay. For example. Yeah, you can say French fries or you can say fries. I don't know if they actually come from France, maybe, but that's what we call them, fries or French fries. Next, we have a cell phone, which... Mobile. Yeah, in British English they call it a mobile. I would not even pronounce mobile like she does. I would say mobile. If I was going to say a mobile phone, it's a mobile phone. Sounds very funny to me. Mobile? mobile. Uh, yeah, mobile, we say. Mobile. Okay, so we call it a cell phone. Cell is short for cellular, and I'm sure there's a long story as to why we call it a cell phone, but I don't know what it is. After that, we have vacation. A vacation in American English is a period of time where you are not at work. Summer vacation or something like that. It's, you know, you're taking two weeks, summer vacation. And I'm going to Hawaii. We say holiday. Yeah. Um, in British English, they say holiday. So, you know, an American expression to go on vacation, to be on vacation in British English. Go on holiday, be on holiday. Or you take holiday from work. Take holiday or take a holiday? Take holiday from work. Take holiday from work. Okay, yeah. interesting. I did not know that. Um, in American English, it would probably be take a vacation or... You can always say take a few days off. Can you say that in British English? You can, yes. Same. Take a few days off. Great. Okay, so there's always that. Um, so vacation and holiday, but in American English we do have holidays also. They're just a different thing. In American English, a holiday is something like Christmas or Thanksgiving or Independence Day. Independence from these people, obviously. <laughs> Um, so a holiday is a specific day that has a specific like function in your uh, country, a specific meaning in your country, right? In British English? Bank holiday. A bank holiday. Is bank Christmas holiday. a bank holiday? Yeah, Christmas Day and Boxing Day are both bank holidays. Boxing Day is the day after Christmas Day. Yes, and do you know why? There's, there's a bit of debate. There's no real story behind oh, it. Okay, there well, are de several theories. Let's not give people bad information here because you know we don't want everybody in the world believing your story about Boxing Day or my story about Boxing Day if it's completely wrong. Um, yeah, so a bank holiday is a specific day and in American English we just call them holidays. A different reason. All right, so the next one I have here is a highway and freeway. Apparently there is some definition, uh, some distinction between a highway and a freeway in American English. Doesn't really matter in my opinion, but yeah, they're both places where you drive your car for long distances. In British English? Motorway. Yes, a motorway. A motorway, you know, same sort of thing. If you're going from one city to another in England, you take the motorway. Motorway. Normally yeah. with three lanes, sometimes two, but no, two lanes is a dual carriageway. Three lanes is a motorway. Great. Oh, interesting. Three, you know three lanes in each direction. Yeah. Three lanes in each direction. Yeah. Two yeah. lanes is a dual carriageway. I'm surprised at your pronoun pronunciation of dual. <laughs> I'm surprised at yours. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, so a dual carriageway. Good to know. Um, after that, we're getting into clothes. We have pants. Um, pants are things that a man or woman wears on the lower half of their body. You wear a shirt on the upper half and you wear pants on the lower half. 
We say trousers. Yeah. A pair of trousers. A pair of trousers. In American English, I mean, I have heard the word trousers more than once, but I always thought it sounded kind of pretentious and annoying. But maybe it's just British. It's just British. In, uh, in American English, yeah, pants. You can always say jeans if you're wearing jeans, but if you're not, I would say pants. And I would say trousers. Yeah, so trousers. There we go. Um, the Which brings us to our next point, which is panties. Panties are women's underwear in American English. Panties, yeah, women's underwear. And we would say either pants or knickers. Knickers more commonly, but, but also pants. So be careful if you're talking about trousers and you say, I'm going to be wearing pants to the party, because to us, that means your underwear. Yeah, this is one of those things where if you are confused about trousers or pants, I recommend using trousers because Americans will understand trousers, British people will understand trousers, and nobody will be confused about if you're talking about your your normal clothes or your underwear, basically. So yeah, I really like your pants, Jane. Thanks. <laughs> For example, that could be an <laughs> awkward situation um, in, other, in other contexts. Those panties? Yeah, okay, panties. Yeah, panties, pants. Pants and knickers. Knickers is a word that I uh, have no idea. It doesn't uh, make... I've never heard it except from Jane here. And we should say that that's spelled with a K, a silent K, K-N. By the yes. way, go to my website, aprendemasinglis.com, to see all of these examples in writing and translations into Spanish. You will not regret it. It will be a wonderful experience, I promise, at my website. And while you're there, buy my books and subscribe to, our, to my emails. After that, we have line. A line is... We're talking only about a group of people standing yes. in a line, right? Okay, so not a line, it's a line. That's a line for okay. us too, yeah. Okay, so if you have drawn a line on a piece of paper, that's a line. But if you're talking about people standing in a straight line in British English? Q. A Q. The spelling of Q is absurd. It's Q-U-E-U-E. -U -E -U -E. Q. And from, well, in American English, we have the phrasal verb line up, which is to form the line. And we say to queue. To queue or to queue up. You can queue up too, yeah. You can queue up. Queue or queue you up can or queue. queue up. Great. So yeah, that's line. In American English, we have trunk. Trunk is several different things, and I assume that it's several different things in British English also. Could a trunk be like a large a box? suitcase. Large suitcase. Okay, yeah, that's a trunk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it the part of a tree that goes from the ground up to? Yes, and an elephant. Part of an trunk. elephant. Yes, yeah. an elephant has a trunk coming off of the front of its face. However, in American English, when we're talking about a car, a car has a trunk. It's part of a car that is on the back that you could put your suitcases in. You open it, you put things in, and you close it again. It's the trunk. We say boot. The boot. Of course, boot is something else in American English. It's something else in British English. Oh, yeah, it means, uh, yeah, it means boots that you wear on your feet as well. Yeah, cowboy boots or some sort of British boot. Sheep her boot or whatever <laughs> that you might have. In any case, that's a trunk in American English and it's a boot in British English. And finally, um, I am completely ignorant about things women carry with them, but Jane has said that purse in American English is something completely different than a purse in British English. So in American English, a purse is a bag that a woman carries with like her. This. That's a purse. Makes sense to me. And for you, a purse is? It's a bag. Bag. Handbag or just bag. Yeah. For me, you could say something is a bag. You could say it's a handbag. I wouldn't even have a problem if you say it. instead of backpack, you say bag honestly, but I'm pretty basic with these things a lot of the time. For you, a purse is? For us, a purse is what you put your money in. This is used by a woman, by used by a man, it's a wallet. So yeah. It's just for women, it's a purse. In American English, we would say wallet for something that a man keeps his money in. For a woman, I'm not entirely certain. Purse, wallet, whatever. Uh, but purse is definitely a handbag that a woman would carry. 
Anything else you would like to add? No, I think that's it. Famous last words, Jane? I think we're done. Well, Jane, it's been a pleasure having you on <laughs> my show or whatever, <laughs> this YouTube adventure. And thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Not bye quite yet because oh. you have to go to my website, apprendemasinglis.com, to see all of the examples in writing and to see the translations and all of that. A lot of people have asked me for videos where I speak more English, so this is the video, one of the videos where I speak more English, entirely in English, but you can always go to my website for more. Thank oh, you very I, much. I would just like to add, it's up to you if you choose British or American English, but the important thing is to stay consistent. If you choose British, try and stay with British. If you choose American, try and stick with American. There's no better or worse. <coughs> British. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, I think that, uh, well, I agree that there is no better or worse. Some people will say that my English is better than your English and you have to speak my English or you're not an intelligent person. I don't agree. Whatever works as long as people understand you is okay. 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 Thank you very much and we'll see you another time. Bye. Bye.